Hello, everyone. My name is Maxogir, or at least that's the name of my main channel here on YouTube. And a link to that should appear in the upper corner of the video right now. This is a uh, redo or a replacement uh, for a video I did a while back, back when everything was just on my main channel. This is Flight Radar 24. It is a live flight tracking site. As you can see, the, uh, the icons of different aircraft here are actively moving. And out of all the different flight tracking sites, it is my favorite, and in my opinion, it is uh, the best as well. You look over at the side and you have different features. Uh, this, this down here is just them uh, trying to throw their Twitter at you. But uh, up here, but uh, up here you have uh, this thing that says aircraft. That, that is the aircraft counter or the current count. On the left of the division slash there, that is the number of aircraft on screen. And over here is the total number of aircraft in the air globally at this moment. And you can already see they do actively change every few seconds. So currently, as of this moment, there are 12,801 aircraft in the air across the world. So that itself is actually one of my favorite things to uh, pay attention to, or to monitor rather. The record number, the highest I've ever seen, was in April of last year, and it got up to 21,178. Now you'll notice a, uh, a pattern up and down over the course of the day. It will reach a high and a low. Right now this is uh, around its low, and then down below that here they'll have a listing of some of the airports that are having like the most severe delays at the moment. All right, now to actually show you the uh, the icons and the tracking stuff itself, you'll notice a whole bunch of different types of shapes. And although not for every single individual type of aircraft, they did still try to have as many distinguishable shapes as they could. So you'll see, for example, one like this, with the more backswept wings and the wings positioned more towards the back. It looks like a silhouette of exactly what it is, which is either a DC-10 or an MD-11. Click on it and it is a DC-10. Although now they've changed the designation to an MD-10, but it's a DC-10. And then we'll look at the actual stuff and show you what that is in a second. But you'll have other icons, like for example here this one, very short wings near the middle with a lawn fuselage, so that's probably 757, and yep, Boeing 757, this one's a freighter version, this is the middle of the night, so most of the aircraft in the air are freight aircraft, and this one, a regular silhouette, but uh, kind of a fatter fuselage, so that's probably a 767, yep, 767, and then you have some like these up here with, uh, you know, backswept four-engine wings that pretty blatantly look like 747s. You'll never guess, but that's the icon for the 747. This one in particular comes up 747-8. And then you'll have these uh, small ones here that have, that have, you know, the uh, regular middle fuselage wings and a regular fuselage shape. These little ones, uh, these icons are used for 737s. The A320 family, and even the ERJs as well. And here, up near the top, you see this huge, huge wingspan, huge fat-looking aircraft with four engines. It looks like an A380. And you'll never guess, it's an A380. Oh, and since we're here, they're actually showing one. They do have a little... Cessna looking icon that's uh, used for little single prop aircraft and the site's universal twin prop icon over here will represent everything from commercial prop aircraft like the Dash 8 down to small things such as Cessna 340s and whatnot. And then you have even bigger than the 767 icon, regular looking aircraft icon. These are used for 777s, A350s, and 787s. 
This one's uh, a 787 coming from Cairo. So there's four different sizes of quote-unquote normal-looking aircraft icons. There's the small one used for the 737s, A320s, and uh, ERJs. There's the slightly bigger, unique one with the lengthy fuselage used for the 757s. There's the third size up used for 767s and for A330s as well. And then there's the fourth and final size up used for the 777s, the A350s, and 787s. There we go. That is the icon for private jet aircraft. It will be the same no matter what, whether it's a Dassault Falcon, a Gulfstream, Cessna Citation, whatever. This one's a, a Challenger. It's They're all going to be under that same icon, but that's the icon for private jets. And this is, uh, well, <laughs> I was expecting it to just be numbers. Sometimes it'll just straight up say block. This icon right here is what the site will just substitute in when it's not being given the information about an aircraft. So basically, whenever you see this, uh, you can you can just assume it's a military aircraft. Now I'll try to find a few more things. Uh, let's see there. There's the uh, the helicopter icon. Again, kind of like the private jet icon. That. Uh, that silhouette there is going to be used for literally any and every type of helicopter. These here are icons for high altitude balloons. Like you can see there, 51,000 feet. And there are also special icons for the Antonov AN-225 and some of the uh, Ilyushin aircraft. Now for the actual information part, when you click on one of the aircraft, the information will show up on the side here. You'll get a, uh, a picture of it, and you'll get its origin and its intended destination. The time frame, scheduled versus actual. The total distance and time traveled so far. The flight number itself, obviously, and what airline, although... Usually, if you're actually using <laughs> flight tracking sites, usually you can just tell uh, by the aircraft library. The type of aircraft, although usually, again, if you're the type of person who does flight tracking, usually you can just tell. But it'll even have things like its registration and serial numbers. Age, this one was uh, manufactured or at least purchased in December of 2009. Current altitude... You can, I believe, uh, oh, yeah. If it's in feet, if you hold the cursor over it, it'll show it in meters. It's track or it's heading, vertical speed, ground speed. The ground speed's in knots. If you hold the cursor over it, it'll show you in regular miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And also, it uh, shows you the previous track of the aircraft, where it's been and what path it's taken. And as a part of that, You'll see the path actually is color-coded based on altitude at that particular position that it was at. So you can see the more purplish up here is when you're at or above 35,000 feet. And then the closer you go back down towards the ground, it turns blue, then light blue, then teal, then green, bright green. And if you go all the way down, it eventually turns yellow... And I believe the yellow is for when you're below a thousand feet. We can check. No, you're not anywhere. How high are you? Yeah, so that's that's in the uh that's just turning green and they're at twenty five hundred feet. So yeah, the yellow is uh basically when you're below a thousand and then and then the white on the track line is while you're on the ground. So you can see the point right here where this particular aircraft actually left the ground. But if you zoom far out enough, you'll eventually uh, get to a point where you'll start to observe patterns. Like here in the North Atlantic, you'll notice that uh, everything sort of is usually always going in one direction 
and it'll go across in a big arc or a big wave. And then at a different time of day, tons of flights will come back the other direction, basically the same, doing a big arc or a big wave. And if you zoom in pretty close on airports during their busy times, you'll be able to notice patterns like this, this uh, circle you have going here. Basically, you'll see as aircraft are coming in to land, they basically have sort of a spiral going down, and they'll all follow that uh, slowly shrinking circular pattern inward. But it's a great sight. It's absolutely fantastic to use. Oh, also, before I forget, you can also set filters if you, like, only want to see specific things. Like, for example, here, I have it set for the, uh, the Bombardier CS100, now the A220, the A330neo, and the DC-10. So, you can set uh, them for specific aircraft. You can set it for aircraft going to or from a specific airport, uh, at a specific altitude, or between specific altitudes, traveling at specific speeds, everything. But uh, this is the filter I currently use, and so you can see, switch it on, and everything disappears. And the sky looks a lot more empty, even though it isn't. But the usual like and subscribe and everything. I have a number of flight footage videos and stuff I've put up here already. You can also head over to my main channel as well. PayPal, Patreon, and even a small red bubble shop. It has some aviation items and other things in it. Everything's in the description below. I will see everybody around next time.